Baroque Cello Breakdown by Sarah Stone. Episode 3. Method, theory, and practice to learn in a short time the cello and its perfection, also known as How to Play Cello, by Corette. In the third and fourth sections of chapter two, How to Hold and Use the Bow, Corette lays out some ground rules for bowing up and down. Section three is about the up bow, and section four is about the down bow. But before we learn his rules, let's have a little vocab refresher. In his treatise, Corette's word for down bow is ture, or push, and his word for up bow is poussin, or pull. So T for down bow and P for up bow. Now back to Corette's rules for the third section when to play an up bow. His first rule is, when you have two eighth or sixteenth notes in a row and the first is an up bow, continue in the same direction for the second one. If a phrase ends with an up bow, the next beat will be down bow. But, in this case, that note is represented by the eighth rest, therefore the next eighth note up beat will start on an up bow. He also adds that the stroke of the bow when pushing up is naturally shorter than that of the bow when pulling down. What he's talking about here is perhaps referring to either the natural strong and weak qualities of the Baroque bow or to the French practice of Inigal. When you play two notes up bow in a row, Corette says the bow stroke is divided into equal parts, but with this difference. If you're playing two eighth notes, the second will pass more quickly. So maybe again, this is referring to Inigal. It's pretty vague, but we can definitely experiment. If you play a dotted quarter note on a push bow or up bow, the eighth after will also be on that up bow. And the same goes for an up bow half note followed by a quarter note. So proportion of these are exactly the same. And so he says it's a similar situation and to do a similar bowing. Corette does say that you have the option to retake for both of these situations. But he goes on to say that you should grow through the notes, and I think this is referring to Messa de Voce, and perhaps the up bow then is a better choice than retaking because you're not breaking the line. Corette ends section three with the idea that two notes played up bow on the same bow will hardly happen as two equal eighth notes or sixteenth notes when the first is in that up bow. And then he refers to example A and B again, which shows us a dotted eighth note and then sixteenth note. Maybe again he's referring to the natural inequality that happens between notes of equal value. And this concept again brings us back to Inigal. So maybe he's saying that this is something that just happens naturally. Now that we learned when to take that extra up bow, let's learn about the down bow. Section 4 of Kret's treatise is titled when to play down bow. Corette first gives us examples of when to take two down bows, but he gives us some requirements. For the first example, retake at the end of a phrase when the last note value is even and there are an even number of notes following that note. If the phrase ends and there is an odd number of notes left in the bar, bow it out as it comes. Next, we're talking about compound meters. So these are meters like 6, 8, 9, 8, and 12, 8. And Corette says that the bowing is as it comes, except if there is a note that is not dotted, at which point you should take two up bows to end a phrase or piece on a down bow. So basically he's saying, fix the bow if you don't end up on a down bow. I find it strange that in a section about down bow, he's telling us to take up bows, but then when you think about it, he's really just saying end on a down bow. Also, if the piece starts with a pickup, make sure that the down beat, the first full bar is on a down bow. The next example shows us a bunch of notes followed by rests. Here Corette says you should retake after every rest, whether it's quarter note rest, half note rest, or a rest for the entire measure. He says this happens often when accompanying in concertos. But then he goes on to say that we shouldn't be a slave to the bowing. We should make sure to still create long and short, strong and weak. Also, he says that he heard the Italians don't do it at all anyway. He talks about slurring very briefly saying that sometimes you play many notes in the same bow on an up bow or down bow, and says that Lancetti made this famous on the cello. He ends the section on bowing with the following words of wisdom. There is no rule without exception.